today's stream we're going to do some more package source um, I was really hoping to do this as a pair programming session with Llewellyn Falco who's the author of the approval tests uh, library the primary author uh, because there's a new version in package source and there's a few things I'm gonna have to do to get it updated usually it's a really easy update but it's a little bit more involved this time uh, so I thought it would be really fun if Llewellyn could come with me and I could strong style pair with him to navigate him through the steps that would be involved. But we haven't been able to schedule something and now there's been a couple more updates to approval tests and as a package maintainer, uh, as much as I would love to make a priority of the pairing session, we have a stable quarterly branch coming up very soon. We cut it every three months, quarterly, uh, and I want to make sure that the latest stable version of approval tests is in that branch while we have a chance. So I'm going to prioritize that higher. Uh, I will get to pair with Llewellyn sometime on something, no question about it, but for this we're going to do it solo and I'll talk as best I can. And those of you who are watching in, in the chat, you can help me direct the work and I can explain anything that's especially interesting. So let's get to it. How do I know there's a new version? There's a couple ways that I know, but the biggest way is that there's a site called Repology. And uh, this is my maintainer page with this email address here. Let's see if my magic highlighter is going to work today. Yes. Yeah, so with this email address, I'm the maintainer of, as you can see, 152 packages in package source. And most of them are very up to date. I really believe strongly in keeping them up to date for the same reason that I believe in continuous integration, because that's what it is. And I have one that's problematic. What is that one? Oops, by SSL. Oh, because the version scheme that I chose is different from the actual version because the software's author chose a versioning scheme that was not monotonically increasing. So, okay, I should probably report that my version corresponds in some way. There is a way to do that. It might even be on that page. Uh, but there is a way to report a bug in the rule set that's down here. And I have done that before. So that's probably something I should do. But what I was looking for today to show you is the outdated items. And you can see right here, Python approval tests. I have 3.1.0. And the latest, according to Repology, is 3.3.0. So Repology might not always have the absolute latest. It's not authoritative. It scrapes a bunch of sources. Um, but if it says there's something newer than what I have, it's a signal that I should check out. So I did. And I can see here, let's just reload this page in case there's even more. Yeah, 10 days ago, they had a new version, 3.3.0. Uh, and let me show you where I am now. Right now, I have in progress, I was starting to do in a previous stream an update from 3.1.0 to 3.1.1. And it turned out that that update was not trivial. Usually these little updates are trivial, but there was a new dependency. And let me show you why that turned out to be a problem. So we're in PI approval tests. Let's do it the other way around. I'll show the diff on the left and I'll show what's going on on the right. Do a make. And, you know, the Python build process is to put things in places, so it's not really going to fail too often. Uh, but what we should be able to do is some kind of a... I think the tests were failing. Let's see if packaging works. It probably does. Yeah. Um, but the thing that I think didn't work is if you ran make test... And there was a missing module. Yes. Let's see. There's a few things going on here. Version number is not defined. Beats me why not. Uh, couldn't import the approval test module for that reason. There might be other errors. Here's what we could do. We could capture that. 
So we're going to keep uh, file descriptor 2, standard error, and make it go to the same place as file descriptor 1, standard out. And then we're going to pipe standard out, which now also has standard error in it, to test log text. Whoops. And we're going to not pipe it, because you can't pipe to a file. You're going to pipe to a program. T is a program that shows its input and writes it to the named file. So, okay, so that's what we were seeing before. And now we can also go through test log.txt in case there's any more information in it. Uh, warning, 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 warnings that warn unknown action. Failed test, failed to load module approval tests. Version number is not defined. Uh, okay, so it's not super clear what's going on there, but I think, if I trust myself last time, I think what we figured out is that there's a new Python module called empty files that is now dependent on here, and we could probably verify that. So let's see. If we go into, let's make clean and make extract, just look in a, in a fresh tarball. So we go into the work directory, and we search recursively, I like to use ag, uh, for empty files. And you can see here in setup.py, there's one way to look for it. You can even do this, uh, have it give me the files where the match exists, and then edit both of those. So we're looking for empty files. Yeah, and so what you can see here, install requires, now it has this empty files thing in the list. My package doesn't know about that. My package knows about Piperclip, which has been there for a long time. I think that's part of a GUI reporter system. Uh, and it knows about beautiful soup, which is for tag parsing. That's BS4 over on the right. And I've had those dependencies handled for a while. PyTest, I don't think it has an explicit test dependency. Um, maybe we need it. Let's make a note. Uh, test depend. Whoops. Uh, and empty files. I'm not sure what kind of dependency it is, but we don't have it. And here's the other part of the challenge. In addition to the fact that we haven't declared the dependency, I don't think it's in package source. Uh, this is CVS updated a day or two ago. It's possible I'm missing something. But if we do uh, show me all the directories in any category with the word empty in their names. And there are these two, devel empty and a work in progress, half empty. Let's see what those are. I don't think either one is it. Empty is something about pseudo terminals. And half empty is something else. Okay, so neither of those is what I'm looking for. Um, it's going to be a Python module because of this. This is a Python application. And when you describe something in a setup.py, it's going to be a Python dependency. So we need to find in the Python repository, which I usually go to PyPy is how I say it. I don't know how people say it. Uh, empty files. And here it is. It's this one. It is also by Llewellyn. So this is very likely to be the right one. And it's a new one. That's why it's a new dependency. And too long I didn't read. Null object pattern for files. So it will create an empty file of a type requested. If possible, the file will be the smallest valid file for that type. For example, an empty JPEG will be one by one pixels. So if we were going to get this from pip in the naive Python way, this is what we would do, and it would just work. But we're going to do it from package source, and we're going to do something you've seen me do before. We're going to find where there's a tarball. Side note, you can see the top option here is called a wheel, and that's a Python-specific packaging method. And one way or another, package source is going to have to learn about wheels. Uh, because Python seems to be heading pretty directly toward wheel-only packaging. 
And so it seems like uh, one thing that might happen for package source is that we have to be able to fetch wheels, extract them, and then repackage them the way that we want them. It'll, it's going to be weird one way or another. Python is doing things in a way that makes sense for Python, and package source, as always, has a bigger problem to solve than any particular language or ecosystem. Uh, package source is trying to continuously integrate everything from every source. So they're going to do what they do, and our job is going to be to figure out how to align that with our worldview so that it can be part of our system. And we will. We have to. It's Python. So in the meantime, I don't have to solve that problem today. What I'm interested in is a plain old tarball. And if I do it like that, I copied the link, and I can go back to <coughs> over here. Um, I guess this is a development tool because it's an implementation of the null object pattern. I don't think you would use that as an application. I think you could use that as a developer tool. So we're going to make a directory. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to call it pi. I guess the right way to call it is empty files. And I'm really hoping we have a tool called URL to package. I'm really hoping it's going to do a lot of this work for me. Uh, but you give it a URL, and that's the one. And let's see what it can figure out. Hmm. I was really hoping it would do better than that. Just a second. Let's see if I can find a better download link. Anyway, in the meantime, I guess that's what it's going to be for now. We'll clean it up later. Uh, comment is that. Do we have something about a license? Apache software license. What's that called in package source? I don't know if it's one or two, so we'll find out. Okay, so we'll look in there. Uh, I guess I'm volunteering to be the maintainer for this because it's Llewellyn stuff and I like to support Llewellyn. So I guess I'll be the, I guess I'll be the person for that. Master sites and homepage are the same so far. Um, I would like to figure that out later. So I don't want to couple those just yet. Let's get going. I'm going to fetch that, extract that. And let's see if it was able to clean up the make file at all. Yes, it was. It was able to find that the home page is here. So that's great. And actually, is that a place that I could be downloading it from? Yes, it is. So let's give this another go. I want to. I want to fetch from here instead. Let's back it up here. Try again a different way. We're going to URL to package that one. Okay. And this is a little bit messier. And we did see the license is Apache 2. So that settles that. Uh, and there was a description, which was serves serve empty files of many types. I'm going to make that a different case. Uh, okay, and we were fetching from here. And that's right. This all looks almost great. Mm. Maybe this is fine. I'm a little surprised at how this line looks. And I was thinking I wanted to edit a little bit here to make the tag be just this part. But maybe URL to package knows something. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let this go. Okay. And where did that leave me? It did a little more work. If uh, so, it, it sees that there's an egg-based installation in Python. So I put that there. 
it sees that uh, there's a dependency on pi requests. So it put that in for me. And we can double check all of this. Let's start to do that now. actually need anything more here. Let's pop up into pi empty files. Oops. Make show install depends. I have requests already. Uh, what I want to do is get into empty files.python and look at the setup.py. It requires requests, but there's no particular version. What about if I look in requirements.txt? Again, no particular version. What are the requirements? Setup tools, approval test, pi test. Okay. So I'm going to make a note of those. Requirements.txt says these may or may not be necessary, but if they are, then I want them in as dependencies. Pi test. Approval tests. That seems circular to backwards. Setup tools and requests is already covered. Uh, Setup.py said just requests, line 18. Setup.config, whoops. It doesn't have anything good about that. Uh, okay. And then. What about the tests? Are they really approval tests? They are really approval tests. So that's tricky. Uh, if you're installing empty files in order to get approval tests, then you can't run empty files as self-tests yet until after you've gotten... Woo! Okay. I'm going to accept that for now. Uh, another thing I want to see about is if I do a make clean, does that look like a well-named package? And it doesn't. So it took the dist name, which is which file it's going to fetch, and then it turned that into a package name. And that is not the package name I was hoping for. I was hoping for pi empty files, like I like I had typed it. So I'm going to change package name before we get too far. And we're going to call it Python, whatever version you're using, empty file. And now, almost, I guess that brings back uh, package version. All right. Aha, uh -huh. that's what I thought. So uh, in this case, we would want the rev if there is a revision. I'll show you what that means in a second. Still recursive? Okay, I'm going to experiment a little bit here because I have a recursive problem. I wish my GitHub tag were just this, and then I could say it here, and then I could say it here. And that much is going to work. Uh, the question is when I have to fetch the dist file, is that going to work? Uh, we can try it. We can try it. So let's see. I'm going to go into dist files and remove that. And then we'll make fetch. No, see? It's not finding it by that path. Uh, I think what I can do is I might be able to do it like this. Uh, this name, oh, this name might be just like that. Is that going to be enough? Still no. Okay. So that's not it. Uh, but I might be able to say GitHub release because these aren't just tags the 
Okay, let me look again for where those are coming from. Okay, archive refs tags. Yeah. Okay, so it seems like it has to be this way. So we're gonna put it back the way it was. And I'm gonna just do it a little bit the other way around. And we're going to define it explicitly here. And then I can. Hmm. Okay. Trying to be excessively efficient here. We're just going to say version 003. Yeah. Okay. That still looks good for when we say make clean and when we say make fetch. It didn't find it. Oh, 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 oh. No. That, that. No, what have I done? What am I missing? Get up that tag. Is that not the right place? Approvals, empty files dot Python. Oh, okay, so maybe like with this added to it. And a training slash. Definitely working too hard here for something. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So, okay, the URL that I needed to fetch is this one. And let's see what URL it's coming up with. It's coming up with this, which is computed based on this name. Which almost, almost looks right. That's supposed to be a, we're trying to get it from archive, refs, tags. I am really confused what I just did here. I might need to start over. This is pretty poor. Because I'm not sure I could even put it back the way that I want it at this point. Okay, so back it up. So we're gonna put that in make files. Some things work and then we're gonna get rid of everything else. 
And we're going to do this again. Like so. So what didn't work here? This name is just that. Okay. Uh, so let's let's do it this way. See if I can do it. Get it right the first time. This name is version. This is also going to be version. Do this. And we know it's an Apache 2.0. Let's see what else I had in my make file some things worked. That's the comment. Okay, and we'll keep this comment. And the rest of it, it figured out for me, so let's go. Okay, how are we doing now? And what does our dist info look like? Yeah, that's the one. Not sure we need that explicitly. Uh, let's see how we do. So there might be enough to, to do a build or to try to. Whoop, no. Uh, so it's trying to CD into something. Okay, so let's keep our explicit work source for now and see how that does. And then try to make it unnecessary. Fine. Uh, I do I, I'm not sure if I expect the test to work because I can't remember if I have approval test install I don't uh, and if we do a make package not sure what happened there let's try just going straight for make package in case tests left some stuff lying around aha there we go okay so we, we have a missing Packing list. This looks pretty okay. And then if we do a make repackage, that will be okay. And then we can do a make clean and not even install it yet. It's not installed yet. And now I can pop back over to approval tests that needed it. And I have that open. I have that open over here. And let's look if there's a particular version required. I can't remember that there was. Yeah, I don't see that there is. So let's just, it's called empty files. So it goes in between empty files. And so far as we know, any numeric pattern is fine and the place to get it installed if you don't have it is develop by empty file so when i come out of here and i say make show install depends we're missing one hello there we go by empty files, any version would do, don't have it. So that means when we say make, it's going to go drop into there first. Oh yeah, and our package version isn't named the way we want it, so this isn't going to work. Right, so it, it built and installed the thing, but we came back to approval tests and said we could not find a package called the thing we wanted. Okay, so let's pop back over there. And package delete this. This is the problem I was trying to solve that I didn't finish solving yet, which is 
I want the package to be named in a way that looks package sourcey, which is typically like Python and then the name of the Python module, and that's it. So we need to get that sorted out. In other words, when we type make clean, we need it to say py 39 empty files 0 3. And we maybe have enough ingredients to do that here. Uh, right, we wanted to not call it dist name, we wanted to call it empty files version. That's better. Uh, and then the real test, that's why all that recursive stuff is happening. If I need to make a local package source change to this later, that's user visible, I would say package revision is one. And that would show up in there, nb1. Okay. So this seems like it could work. And then just to be a really good test, we want to remove... any of that, and then we want to make fetch. And it broke its ability to find that thing again by changing the package name. That is super weird. Yeah, it's using the package name here which is not ever going to work. Why is it doing that? Why is it computing the dist? This name is still going to be what I want. And it is. Dist files is still that, which is what we see. Master sites is coming out like that. And that's coming out like that. Okay, we're hot on the trail. I'm using the make show var target in package source with the var name argument to see what these things expand to. And this is the one that's wrong. And so I want to look for uh, where a GitHub tag. and a dist name get turned into where to fetch it from. So let's pop up in there. It's going to be in MK somewhere. That's where the package source infrastructure is. And let's look for GitHub tag. Uh -huh. So we have a few places. Uh, the first one is BSD package MK. And that is inferring where the extracted tarball is going to be extracted to work source. Then we have bsd fetch vars.mk. If there's a GitHub tag and it matches this pattern, then the default dist files is going to be the dist name, followed by the tag, followed by tar.gz. That so far is not our problem. It's this intermediate path that is our problem. And I think I see what to do right now. Uh, GitHub tag defaults to package version array. And then it's saying uh, URL should look like github.com, which we have. Account, which we have. It's approvals. GitHub project slash archive. So I might just need to define GitHub project. That might be enough. So let's pop back out and see what GitHub project is currently. Oops currently defined too. Yep, that's what it inferred it from. So I just have to come over here and say no. It's called emptyfiles.python. And now that I've said that there, I can say it here. And I guess I could even say it here. Is that right? Yes, it is. 
Okay, and if I do my clean, the package name is still good. And if I do this one, it's going to be right. So now I can say make fetch. And it worked. Woo! That's what we needed to figure out before. Okay. While we're at it, let's see what package lint has to say. Oh, yeah, we got lots of other things to do. Uh, there's the description that we need to say. Okay, and let's let's find something that's a little more like English. Uh, here. Okay, uh, null object pattern for files. This library, I guess, is what it is. And I guess the better way to say this is that. OK, that looks better. Package lint should have less to say. OK, and the plist that's saying I should include egg.mk instead of listing egg info files directly. So let's look for those egg info files and not list them and see if that's fine. If it's not fine, the plist won't match. Um, now we should have a pretty quiet. Yeah, it's just that I'm editing the session right now. OK, so let's see how we do for a package. Ooh. Ooh. So. It really seems like those need to be in the packing list. Uh, somebody who understands Python packaging more than I do could have an opinion about it, but I certainly do not. So I'm just going to keep it the way that it was working. Oh, what the heck. Let's go in there and see if it's really an egg or what. If there's a way to know. Egg doesn't say anything about egg. Uh, so what does it mean in package source for something to be an egg? Package Python distributions which use setup tools to create an egg. Some distributions use dist utils, but this was saying setup tool. True eggs always have an egg info. I don't know, man. Uh, one other thing that could be important here is which version of Python is this compatible with? I'm going to guess not two. Python requires 361. So I need to mention that to package source. Uh, what versions of Python do we have? Three, six or higher. So we just have to say not two seven. So Python versions incompatible is 2.7, and then it won't try to build with that version, and that's fine. We might be okay here. Do I need to explicitly depend on setup tools? I bet egg does that for us. Setup tools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It figures out which version of setup tools to depend on and already does that. So I'm going to take that dependency off. 
approval tests, we already decided it's circular, especially for building. It's going to be circular testing. It's okay if you ran the test later, but for building it's circular, so we can't have that dependency. And what about pi test? Is that something that needs to be explicitly dependent on? Maybe. So we're going to make a test depends on pi test. That's a funny way to say we usually prefer this. Oops. Okay. And what about work source? Right now it's explicitly that. And if I don't set it, it is wrong. Okay, then let me set it more symbolically at least. I think it's trying to say this. Yeah, and that looks the same. In which case, we should be able to do that. Should be able to do this. And the work source is fine. Packaging still works. Okay, we're about there. Um, package lint. It's telling me again about the egg stuff. I'm not going to worry about the egg stuff. So let's pop back up to approval tests. Where we have this missing dependency. And let's get it. And this time it will work and it will come back to the Python approvals build. Mm -hmm. There it is. And I don't know. Let's see about this. Make test. Still didn't like it. Don't know why not. But we were seeing that there was a pi test test dependency for this one too. So let's see if that means something. Let's make that the test depends here too. Oopsie. Oh, it's not a Vim split. That's why I can't copy it with Vim. Okay, yeah. It's a Tmux split. There's no Vim pasteboard in Tmux. Different. Okay, and I'm going to make these line up a little more accurately with each other. In that one, we put incompatible down near the bottom. Uh, work source we would usually do first if it has a special definition. Depends, test depends. Okay, and then I guess. I guess this must be equally true. Something's not working here. 
I wonder if I'm not running tests the way I'm supposed to run tests. Getting started with PyTest. That's for using the library. I'm not sure what's going on here. So I'm trying to get the test to pass for approval tests, but I'm not sure whether they have passed before in package source. And I don't want to overinvest in that if it turns out not to be that important. Um, so let's let's come back to that. I think what we did here is that we have enough of a package so we have enough of a package this was this was the approval test update that i was trying to add and there it is and we have the package that we'd want to add so let's do that first And this one I think is also clear with package lint, except for the egg stuff. Maybe somebody can fix that in package source later. So I want to say what I always say is go into doc package source text and look for CVS add. And we're already there. So CVS add this. CD back in there. See this add all the files that it has. And if I am to files and I like to get the comment out of the make file and the whole description file. Okay. Off it goes. From practice, I know that I probably need to update the package make file before I commit to it. So we're looking for pi. It's a good spot. Empty files. So that recursive builds will include this package. And CD back in there. And a note in the package source change log that we have this package now. And anytime I add a package, I like to do this. I like to say git init, git add all of it, add package source this to git for offline hacking. That's a bit too long. This name is already pretty package source looking, so I'm going to just call it like that. And then we go over to GitHub. Make a new repository and a new tab and call it package source that. And for the description, I will take it from the comment. And boom. 
And I'm ready to do this one. That's it. Right, and then let's twiddle this a little bit. We're not using GitHub for any of those things. So there will be a page there. PackageSource.se is a great place to search these later. Uh, so I'll just save it like that. And then one other thing I like to do is add my funding information for anybody that wants to support my open source work. We can just copy it from there. I'm typing poorly today. This is not one of my better streams. I have to apologize. Uh, we wasted a lot of time getting the package to fetch and build. Um, it can be like that sometimes. I guess that's true. But I haven't been explaining myself very well. I'm a little preoccupied. I haven't twitched in a week. Um, lots of background noise at home. So I'm happy to be streaming again, but I forgive you if this is not one of your favorite streams, and I will do better with the next one. So let's commit. Uh, add... Funding YML so folks can support my work. Give that a push. And this is a cool piece of metadata that GitHub has. If you're in the GitHub Sponsors program, and now you can see on the right-hand side, here are various ways you can support me doing this. There's uh, GitHub Sponsors directly, and then there's all these other sites to support me. So now that's in package source. We're not done. We're trying to get all the way up to date on approval tests. PyMD files is done. So we can pop back to approval tests. And let's double check what we're about to commit there. Yeah, so now we can say commit to, to package source with that commit message and remove that file once it's been committed and add a change log entry to package source. So this is pretty easy stuff. Now that we have the dependency in place, it's pretty easy stuff. I just like to keep my git copy of that up to date. And now we are at approval tests this version. The latest is 3.3.0. So now this could maybe be a little bit simpler. Let's do it over here. Three point three point zero. It said. Now I thought make make some, and it fetched it, uh, and now we can do a make patch, which is like an extract plus any patches you might have. I don't think we have any. Uh, now we can reach in here to see if there's like a change log. I don't think there has been though, no. uh, and so I'm gonna write my own commit message. And then we're going to borrow from here. So we were on 3.1.1, where we did this. And what is happening here? Added verify binary. Close the 67. Ah, verifying binary data. Okay, so that's a message. And 
one way or another this is a message. Whoop. I'll just paste it in like that and then we'll really edit it. So that was an older change. Uh, we can say add report on CyberDojo reporter, which creates a file name, test name, diff file. Put the breaking change first. New reporter. That seems better. So that's what I will commit when it's ready to commit. It might be ready to commit. I really don't know. Uh, I'm going to try again once it packages. Whoop. PyCache, PyCache, binary writer. Okay. So here's what we're going to do we're going to write the updated plist. And then because this is in Git, we can diff that nice and quick. Okay, yeah, we got these new binary writers. We got these CyberDojo reporters. And we got that report by creating a diff file. Okay. All right. Uh, that seems plausible. So this is as good a package as it was in the previous version. But remember, we weren't sure if the tests were able to run. I would like to see why they wouldn't. Let's see if they do first. Maybe something's been fixed. No. Okay. Still have this failed to import test module approval tests. Let's get in there. I saw a string saying running tests. Where does that come from? No. Can I look for... Well, that's going to match a thousand places. Uh... Mm -hmm. What happens here? These are the built files. It's complaining about a version number. Version number is not defined. And that's coming from... So let's come back up here and look for version number. Does anybody have this? This looks like a mistake to me. Because what defines version number? That is not clear to me at all. So what if I try something here? Start clean. And say instead that it's this. Because I think that's what version is calling it. Yes. And now, how does it go? Wow, uh, that's not better. Okay, let's try this a different way. Uh, 
edit this one and see if making it match that name helps. And this time, let's capture the output. Hey, would you look at that? Uh, it ran zero tests, but it didn't blow up. What can we learn about what we're supposed to be doing here? Running test. Testing this client is deprecated. Users looking for a generic test entry point are encouraged to use talks. Set up tools on installers deprecated. Okay. So the error before was that it couldn't load the approval test module. And now at least it can. So I wonder if, yeah, also it's normalizing this version. So I wonder if this is all to the good. So let's look at our, look at our full log. Is that really it? That is really it. Encourage to use talks. Do I have talks? Okay. Uh, let's see if we can figure out how to use talks. Before we do that, there's a patch I want to keep, I think, and it's this one. Uh, the rest of the code seems to be looking for the symbol version number, and now we have that. Uh, I definitely want to run this by Llewellyn and see if it's right. Uh, but so far, right now, it seems to be helping me. So we'll keep that. Um, and there's also going to be that one that we don't need. And we're going to make a checksum so we keep it. And I wanted to figure out about talks. So let's see what happens. Is there any reference to talks in here? Ah, okay, okay. Oh. Gosh. Self-tests. Install PyTest and talks. And then do that. Alrighty. Gotcha. Uh, talks is going to be... Develop by talks. Just like that. And that's going to be another test depends. And what about that one? Is it itself version? I'm not sure. This looks like a pretty heavy dependency. Test. Okay, we have to figure out how to integrate that in a package sourcey way. Um, is that installed? It is, so that's going to be helpful. Okay, so how do we wind up? running the tests the way that we had run them. Uh, let's look for talks in Lang Python. Let's look for I test. Let's look for just test. I'm looking for the test target in particular. That's where it happens. Extension.mk test yeah okay 
So I want to do something like that, but with tux. Okay, so we have to define our own do test target, and it'd be similar. In fact, copy. So far, so good. Instead of pi setup, pi setup args, yada yada yada, I want dash n talks. Anything else? Pi setup would have been that. Pi setup args would have been empty. Start of the tests. Yeah. Guess that's it. Okay. Blorg. Uh, there's no. Oh, okay. Setup config can do it. But we didn't find it. Let's try this by hand. It's right there. Do I need to name it? Oh. <laughs> How does talks work? Python talks. Read the docs. That's what I want to do. Yeah, it doesn't have any information about running docs. Need a docs any. Could try generating one. Oh yeah, yeah. This looks complicated. Okay, uh, I'm not going to learn this much about talks today. And I'm not convinced that any of this is correct. At least at present. So let's keep that out. Let's keep what we could do, which is at least make the test load. Right. And then make install. And I want to, as a quick check, oh, we have an older version. As a quick check, I want to follow the approval test documentation and make sure that the library really loads because I've changed it. I, I applied this patch. So it's called version number instead. 
Uh, I think one way we could check that would be Python 3.9 M approval tests. I think if it was broken, maybe it wouldn't load, but let's, let's do better than that. Approval test Python. There we go. Let's do that. Testing one, two, three, dot five. Okay. That seems possibly fine. Uh, and then I need to run it with PyTest, which I guess goes like this. Uh huh. And this is what approval test does, so it's definitely working. Uh, and now I want to um, keep this change. How do I? This one. Yep. Save. Quit. And then when I run the test again, it will pass. That's exactly what approval test does. So at a glance, with my patch, this is good. Uh, let's let's remove. Some things. Okay. Uh, and now let's make that patch not applied. And I would expect that it can't run my test anymore. Not that the test is read, but that the test can't be run. For the same reason that we saw before. Yeah. Yeah, so I really have to wonder how they're testing this. Uh, we really seem to need that patch. So I'm going to keep it. I'm going to uh, include. And I should probably report that to Llewellyn. So I'll finish up this session with a PR or an issue report. Uh, but again, just to be really clear, package lint right now is going to say you got a bunch of weird stuff lying around here. That's fine. Uh, but let's rebuild with the patch. And the test should pass. I mean, run. Yeah, and we get back to here, and that's how it works. Save. This is the change that I do want to have. And now, from now on, it is that. Okay. Uh, before I commit, let's file our issue report. Issues. Oh, this is here. Hold the phone. Okay, so we need this one and this one and this one, and let's see what we can do about it. Yes. Mm hmm Okay, so that error was new. Yes. So I'm going to agree with this patch.
Okay, so it's added. If I try to load module, you get the same name error. And attaching the what was the file path? It was this one. I'm trying to. So that's good enough for me. And since that seems to be right, I'm going to keep it. And let's get rid of stuff we don't need, which is the script and the approval. Uh, and we do need the CVS add the new patch. Which is a two-step thing. Directory first. And package link should be pretty good now. And it is. Package source changes, fix, um, yeah, fix version, version number to fix module loading. Issue reported upstream. Okay. That's done. And now it's in Git as well, my Git as well as package sources CVS. And with that, we are uh, up to date on approval tests and package source. And it looks like the example works again. Hopefully they fix that upstream and uh, test it upstream. Maybe when I do pair with Llewellyn for one of these sessions, we'll work on that. So thanks for watching and see you again next time.